Today, I'm going to compare my Soldano SLO30 tube amplifier to the Solo 100 OD amp model in the Line 6 Helix for HX Stomp or Helix Native and see how they compare. I think the Soldano is a really cool amplifier. I've spent some time with it. I've already made a couple of videos with it, including a demo slash review with my Les Paul Custom, which you can check out up here or down here if you're interested. But this is where the fun begins because I want to compare this amplifier to many modeling platforms and tube amplifiers as well. There are some important things that I need to touch on before we start this comparison though. So obviously I have the newer SLO30 version of the SLO and all the amp modelers basically emulate the older SLO 100s. The newer Soldanos, so this one and the newer SLO 100s and the Astro and things like that are built by BAD, which are boutique amp distribution in the States. But the older ones were built by Mike Soldano himself. Now this new SLO 30 supposedly sounds very similar to the new 100 and the preamps are basically identical. Now the 100 obviously has more headroom but these amps were basically designed so that the sound comes from the preamp. And I don't really like to crank mine to the point where the power tubes start to distort anyway. And with the new standard depth control that all the SLOs have now, you can dial in the low end thump anyway. However, I did watch a couple of interviews with Mike Soldano about the new amplifiers, and he did mention that the older SLOs didn't really play nicely with V30s because of the old transformers. I guess for his taste, the older Soldanos were a bit too forward and perhaps too pokey sounding for the V30s. But he did say that the newer versions of the SLO, so the bad versions, do play very nicely with the V30s because of the different transformers that they use now, basically. So if you buy a new Soldano cabinet, it does indeed come with V30s. So I am expecting there to be a difference in the mid-range and or treble region when you compare this amplifier to the older SLO 100s, okay? And since all the amp modelers basically model the old SLO 100s, I'm expecting the same difference to be present. So in short, I'm not expecting my amplifier, so my version of the SLO to sound identical to all the modelers. We also have to take into account things like impedance curves. My amplifier will be fed through my RED7 amplification Amp Central Reactive Load, which has its own impedance curve. But the Line 6 Soldano model obviously wasn't modeled with that exact load. So there probably will be some subtle EQ differences because of that. Phew, with that out of the way, let's get started. So as I said, the amp is going through my RED7 load and then it's going into an Ohnhammer Rockbox IR with the new SB75J PVC Scumbag speaker, which is awesome sounding by the way, on the Modern 3 mic mix. And that same exact IR will of course also be used for the Helix. I'll show you the settings in a minute, but note that I used Helix Native for this comparison because Helix Native makes it easier for me to make this comparison and dialing in the controls and stuff like that. But of course you can get the exact same tones by using the same settings on the Helix or HX Stomp. Now first I want you to go in blind. So I'm gonna play this comparison without telling you which one is which. And try to listen closely. What sort of differences are you guys hearing and which one do you think is the real amplifier and which one is the modeling platform? So the Helix or HX Stomp. Take a listen.
Very cool. Interesting indeed. Both sounded very good, but which one was the Helix modeling and which one was the real tube amplifier? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below first before you check out the reveal, okay? Let's do this together. Okay, now we're gonna check out the results with an isolated AB back-to-back -back comparison. So just with the guitars, take a listen. <laughs> So there you have it. A was the real Soldano SLO32 amplifier and B was the Helix amp model, so the Solo 100 OD. And again, both sounded killer, but definitely not exactly the same, as was expected. Sometimes when I do these types of comparisons, the Helix models come out sounding very close, nearly identical, and not so much this time around, but I honestly think that that's because of the factors that I mentioned earlier in this video. The Helix model definitely was a bit more forward sounding and sort of more pokey as I was expecting. And I even dialed down the treble control on the Helix model a little bit because it was just too forward sounding in comparison. The low end response was also a little bit different, perhaps a little bit more stiff sounding on the Helix model, but that was based on a 100 watt amplifier with a lot more headroom anyway, so that kind of makes sense. And the model didn't have the depth control. And the real amplifier had a little bit more of a scooped sound and response, which I thought was quite pleasant. It was a bit more raw and unpredictable. And perhaps the impedance curve difference plays a bit of a part here. And the top end of the SLO was also a little bit more raw on the real amplifier. And the model was just a little bit more smooth up there. Now, I did try to raise the treble and presence, of course, but the sound drifted a little bit further apart with those settings. So that's why I used the settings that I ended up with. Despite those differences, I guess you could say that they both sounded like a Soldano. They both sounded like a version of the SLO. Now, if I had to pick my favorite this time around, I think I would go with the real amplifier because of its slightly more raw and unpredictable nature and the slightly scooped nature. I just like the overall balance that the real amplifier has. But that's just a personal thing, of course. You might prefer the Helix model. Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Which one do you prefer? And remember, it's totally fine to prefer the sound of this $3,000 plus amplifier. Now I'm planning on doing the same thing with my quad cortex, my fractal, etc. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Stay tuned for those. And maybe when I've done all of those modeling platforms, I will also do a big blind test just to test your ears. Anyway, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you found it useful. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below as that really helps the channel out. I'd usually appreciate that. And of course, you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching and hope to see you soon. Cheers.